So next up guys, we're gonna be creating our profile view. So let's just hop right into it and go up to our core folder, create a new folder for our profile. And we're gonna move this right below our new message view and right above root to keep this in alphabetical order. And then we're gonna make two folders here, one for our view model and one for our view. And in the view folder, let's go ahead and just create this file. It's going to be a Swift UI view and we're going to call this profile view. Simple enough, right? So this is gonna be pretty straightforward, guys. We're just gonna create this header view and then we're gonna create a list that has two sections, one for our options here and one for logging out and deleting our account. So we're gonna put all of this inside of a VStack. And you guys can see here that this will uh, scroll, but the header will remain sort of sticky up at the top. And if you wanted to make the entire thing scroll, guys, you could just make this a scroll view. It's really up to you. Um, so I'm gonna just do a layout re really quick here. We're gonna have our header, then we're gonna have our list. So our header is gonna be another V stack. It's gonna have this image in the text. So let's just go ahead and do that really quickly. Image system name, person.circle.fill, dot resizable dot frame width and height of 80 by 80 and we are going to give it a foreground color of color dot system gray four and then we're going to have a text component we can just say bruce wayne dot font is going to be dot title two font weight is going to be semi bold so that's already looking pretty good there next up we're going to create our list and this list will have two sections, guys. So we're just gonna start this off with the log out and delete account option. So we're gonna create a button here. It's gonna say log out. And the action, we can leave blank for now. And then we can create another one that says delete account. And we can leave the action blank. Then we're just gonna give this section a foreground color of dot red. Next up, what I want us to do is create the data model for this and also the UI for it. So we can start with the UI and then move on to the data model. So we just need to create like these, this like little option row where it has an image and a text component for the title. So here, let's just go ahead and say like for each and we can say zero, maybe up to like five ID backslash dot self. And we can say like option in, we're gonna create like a settings option data structure. And this is just gonna be an H stack. We're gonna say image system name, and we'll just do like a placeholder for now. We could do bell.circle.fill, dot resizable, dot frame, width and height of 24 by 24, guys. And then we could do like a foreground color of, you know, like color dot system purple, something like that, right? So that looks pretty good. Then we just need a text component. So we're gonna say text like notifications. Dot uh, font dot sub headline. It's cool. So that looks pretty good. Next up, let's go ahead and just create the data model for that. Um, a lot of these options, if you're watching the YouTube version of this course, guys, are not gonna be functional. We're just putting them here to show you guys how to sort of build out a settings page with uh, like a, a data model that's scalable that you can easily customize. Um, but in the pro version of this course, a lot of these will have functionality, especially dark mode, active status, privacy, notifications, all that stuff. So um, this is just gonna be sort of for display purposes right now. And you guys can introduce functionality if you would like or buy the pro course. So let's go ahead and go to our view model folder. And I'm going to create a Swift file, hit next. And I'm gonna call this settings options view model. So this is basically just gonna be the view model for all of my settings. And I am going to type this out with you guys. So we're gonna create an enum here and it's gonna be called settings options view model. It's gonna be an integer type. It's gonna be case iterable. I'll explain what that means in a second. And it's also going to be identifiable. So let's create our options here. So basically guys, we just wanna mimic what we see here on the screen and we're gonna create a case for each one of those options. We're gonna say case dark mode, case active status, case accessibility, 
case privacy, case notifications. Cool. So I really like to use enums like this. They're extremely powerful in that they create a really robust data set for us to use to create, uh, like to, to really create a user interface like that. Um, and we'll see how in just a second. So we also need to create an ID property, guys. It's gonna be an int and we can just say return self dot raw value. The reason this needs an ID is so that we can actually loop through this data structure, look at each one of our cases and assign an identifier to it so that SwiftUI can distinguish between those views. Um, you guys have probably seen this before. We can do this with enums as well. And we make this an integer because this is an integer type enum. So basically what Swift is saying under the hood is that this dark mode case is equal to zero. This is equal to one, so on and so forth. And now we can add associated properties to our enum to get the data that we need here. So the first one we're gonna start with is our title. So it's gonna be a string and then we can say switch and we can do a switch on self. And self in this case is referring to our enum. So you guys will notice that um, it's going to say switch must be exhaustive. If I hit fix, it's going to give me back all of the cases associated with this data structure, right? So basically what this is saying is when I am looking at the dark mode case, I want the title to be dark mode. And we can do this for the rest of these guys as well. For active status, we can just say, hey, I want the title to be active status. This I want return accessibility. This one we can say privacy and safety. And this one we can say return notifications. So let's go ahead and see how we can use this inside of our profile view. So now instead of looping through this static range of numbers, we can actually loop through that enumeration that we just created. So we can say uh, settings options view model dot all cases. And the reason we can say dot all cases guys is because we conform to that case iterable protocol right here. So this essentially allows us to treat all of our cases like, uh, like a data structure like you would see with an array, right? So it kind of wraps all them up into an array so that we can iterate over that array, which is really, really cool, which is why we're able to use this for loop like that to loop through all of those enum cases. We also now don't need the ID property there because we conform to the identifiable protocol. Now we're looking at each individual option. And here, this is where this really starts to come together. So for the text component, we're gonna say option.title. And now you guys will notice that it replaces the, each one of those titles with the correct uh, title corresponding to each individual option. So when it's on the first case, that's dark mode, it gives me back dark mode, then active status, accessibility, so on and so forth. Now we're just gonna do the same thing for our image name and image background color, guys. So we can go here, and I'm just gonna paste these in here. You guys can stop and type this out. It's the exact same concept, right? This gives me back the image name for each associated case, and this will give me back the image background color for each associated case. I'm gonna replace these guys with black really quickly. So once again, guys, you can just pause the video, type all this stuff out here, and then we're gonna go back to our profile view and replace each one of our rows with the corresponding data for our image name and image background color. Also, just make sure you import SwiftUI up at the top so we can recognize that color data type. So now we go back here, I replace image name with option.image name. And this guy with option.image background color. And as we can see there, guys, that comes to life beautifully and it looks absolutely incredible. And I just wanna go back to this enum and talk about why I like to use enums in these types of situations and why they're so powerful and all the benefits of them before we move on to the rest of the functionality on this page with like selecting our profile photo and stuff like that. So because we are using an enum here, guys, and we're using switch statements to uh, handle all of this associated data or the metadata associated with what we want for this settings row, like an image name, text, and color, and all that stuff, Anytime I wanna add or remove an option, it's gonna be really, really easy for me to modify, right? So let's imagine I wanted to add another thing called test, right? You'll notice that my code is gonna throw an error in all of the places that I need to introduce that new property, 
or the new data associated with that property, right? So I just go ahead and hit fix, 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 add the data that I need, and I'm good to go. Because I'm looping through all of the enum cases, it will just automatically add that. So let's go ahead and just take a look at this. We could say return test, uh, return, oops, return person.circle.fill, and then here we could say like return uh, dot pink, okay? And we go here, and we will notice that my section has magically updated with my new data. So we see test, we see the image, we see the color. And similarly, if I want to remove that option, I just go ahead and I remove it from my enum, and then it will throw errors in all the places I need to remove that data. So this is a super scalable solution here for creating like option sets like that. So that's why I like to use enums here, guys. They're extremely powerful and they make your code so easy to maintain and work with. So it serves as sort of a single source of truth, right? Everything I need to do to update my data set here is just handled in this enum, which is really, really nice. But enough of that. We're gonna start the next section off with how to select a profile photo, and then we are gonna be moving on to the navigation to get here from our inbox view, like this. And then, like I said, selecting a profile photo, and then ultimately populating this with user data before we move on to getting started with our chat view. So that's gonna be super exciting, guys. We will see you there. Peace.